at Michigan State. He turns to the sweet science. He'll be facing Johnny White. He also was a decent football player, but Johnny had an injury that curtailed his college career before it even got started in earnest. He's from Louisiana, 25 years old, 6'1", 228, a 22-1 record. His lone loss was a knockout to former top contender Dominic Gwynn. White says he's learned from that loss. Now it's time to see how the fighters will keep their edge. Brought to you by Just For Men Mustache and Beard. Keep your edge, Teddy. Well, let's start with the man who I think is going to have the edge, Mitchell. You're bigger, you're stronger, go forward, go downstairs, then go upstairs with that looping right hand. And for White, you're more experienced. Use it. Catch him coming in and avoid that big right hand. So Seth Mitchell didn't start boxing until he was 25. Played for Bobby Williams and John L. Smith at Michigan State. And he's talked plenty about the difference between football and boxing. In fact, Teddy, he decided he wanted to become a fighter after he was watching the Contender Reality Series on TV. He said, you know, I think I can do this. But what really motivated him is when Tommy Zibakowski turned pro. You remember the former Notre Dame safety who used to come to some of our fights in Chicago. He'd sit ringside bus behind us. Yeah, was an outstanding player at Notre Dame. Now plays for the Baltimore Ravens. He debuted at Madison Square Garden. Looked impressive as a young heavyweight, but obviously his NFL career usurped all. Yeah, but one big difference with Tom Zubikowski, he had about 75 amateur fights. He was fighting as a teenager. This wasn't a guy who right. just said, I'm a good athlete, I'm going to go in there and give exactly. it a spin. As you said, he had a lot of amateur experience. He was fighting as a teenager. Big difference from what Mitchell was trying to do with none of that amateur experience to speak of. I actually asked Mitchell about that when we met with him yesterday. I said, do you, do you regret things now? Do you wish that you could have gone back and started boxing earlier? He says, you know what? College football was a great experience for me. But he does say to his trainer every so often, can you imagine if I had started when I was 14 years old? Both fighters instructed in the dressing room. Give me a hard, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Anything above there is good. Anything above there is good. Touch gloves. Come out fighting. Or is this the the referee? So this is probably the first time you're going to hear me handicap a fight this way. But, you know, White, of course, was a football player too. But not of the elk that Mitchell was, not at that level. So I'm going to say I think that the better football player is probably going <laughs> to have the edge in this fight because he's the better athlete. He's the bigger guy. He's the guy who has performed on a <laughs> level, even though not in the ring, on a level that White has not emotionally and physically shown he can perform on yet. So I'm going to go with Mitchell, the better athlete. It's not a bad handicapping angle when you're taking Michigan State over McNeese State. So early on here, scheduled for eight. White hasn't fought for seven and a half months. Mitchell's been much more active. Only fought one month ago. Actually, five weeks ago. Look for that looping right hand from Mitchell. Likes to go downstairs with it, then upstairs with it. You can see right now. Sends him off balance with a left. And again, the physical edge to Mitchell. So he scores a knockdown Five, in the opening minute here of six, round number one to Seth seven, Mitchell. Eight. Eight. If I'm Mitchell, I'm looking at that looseness around the belt line of White. White might have been an athlete at one time, but he hasn't been taking care of that body, not to the not to the level that Mitchell has. So if I'm Mitchell, I'm attacking that body and see if I can find something soft there. Told you that Johnny White is 22 and 1. In his only loss, he was knocked out in the first round. That was against a far superior opponent in Dominic Gwynn. But he admitted, hey, I froze up under the bright lights on a big stage on TV. See how he fares in the second half of this first round. Well, most of the fights for White in Louisiana, Mississippi, easy to get wins there. All his fights, in other words, have been in the South, except for one. And that was the one where he was knocked out. And as you said, the only time he stepped up in competition, but a huge step up. You know, some of these guys make a mistake, and their handlers make a mistake because they think they're going to take a pro fighter like Dominic Quinn, who hadn't been doing well, who'd been fighting in a very lethargic way, 
and they're going to go in there and they're going to get him at the right time. You're wrong because you're still a guy that is not a fighter, has never been a fighter at that level. You've been an athlete, but Gwyn is a guy that's been fighting since he was a kid, had hundreds of amateur fights, so it's a big, big step up in class. It's too much for Johnny White. Mitchell placing that jab. Well, Mitchell's sending a message with that jab. It's like a ramrod. You know, he's telling White what we talked about. I am physically stronger. Feel my physicality with just my jab. And just imagine in your mind what it's going to be when I bring the other punches. In other words, a little intimidation factor with that jab of Mitchell. More good work with that left hand for Seth Mitchell. Just missed with the right uppercut underneath. Coming to the end of round number one. Good opening round for Seth Mitchell scoring a knockdown here. More to come. It's not always the punch that does the damage or it's where it lands that's significant. Right there you see a jab drop white and the jab was on the tip of the chin. He caught white coming in, squared up a little bit, but you hit a guy on the tip of the chin, whether it's a right hand or a jab, you're probably gonna affect him. Round number two of our heavyweight co-feature scheduled for eight. Compubox stats from round one. You know, you know I mentioned earlier. Coming from just over the left eye of Johnny White. Looks like Mitchell can win this fight just with the jab. You know, I mentioned earlier that White has been in very, very soft. Most of his fights in Louisiana and Mississippi. To be fair, Mitchell has been in very soft. There are your compu box numbers from that first round. Dominated by Mitchell. Saw the jab score the knockdown. It was 25 of 65. It was a right hand to the body. He's got him right where he wants him against the ropes. <laughs> Mitchell's the bigger man. All his fights have been in the 240s, even 250 one time. Good solid jab again, and it buckles the knees of Johnny White. Just missed with that right hand. He should use the uppercut now because White is leading forward, and he may not need the uppercut. And he waves off the fight, does Lorenzo Saenz. He turned around, looked back, and saw Johnny White unstable, and on spaghetti legs, and he says, I have seen enough. This fight is over. The first time that White lost, he was knocked down one round by Dominic Wynn. Just a better fighter, more superior fighter. A terrific amateur fighter. And this time, he stepped up, not with a guy with that pedigree, but with a raw fighter, but a physical specimen. A fighter who had more physical ability and strength than he had. And that was enough. The former Big Ten college football player, now a late blooming heavyweight. Saw that left hand do damage again. Right hand did come in. There was a right hand just to the temple, Teddy. Yeah, he said, well, that's his favorite punch, Joe. That's that looping right hand. We talked about him, keep your edge. The looping right hand gets around the glove. Right there, you can see it around the glove. It got white on wobbly legs, and the referee did the proper thing. For the official particulars, we send it up to the ring to Thomas Triver. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official time. One minute, 18 seconds of round number two. Our referee in charge, Lorenzo Size, stops the contest. Your winner by way of technical knockout and still undefeated, Seth Mayhem Mitchell. I asked Seth Mitchell, the former linebacker, what feels better, making a great sack, making a great stop? or stopping a guy. He said, undoubtedly, when you land flush and you walk out of that ring knowing you took somebody out. TKO victory, he'll be feeling good tonight. Seth Mitchell moves his mark now to 17-0-1 with 11 knockouts. And Johnny White once again steps up and is taken out. Second loss of his career. Much more to come on Friday Night Fights from New Mexico. First, Brian Kenny.